Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use macros in SAS. With macros, you can make your code more reusable and flexible. Reusing code can save you a lot of time and reduce clutter. Macro programming can seem daunting at first, especially if you're new to programming. But if you focus on and practice the basics and build out from there, I promise you'll find this skill very rewarding. This is the second video in the macro series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use blocks of code to do repetitive tasks. In a previous video, I showed you how to create and use a macro variable. In another video, I'll show you how to use if-then logic and loops to process large amounts of data with very little code. In example one, we're going to be using the cars data set from the SAS help library. It includes makes and models for different cars, as well as information about each, including type, MSRP, and miles per gallon. You may remember this block of code from the first SAS macro video in the series. In that video, we used the let statement to assign different car makes to our proc print block. Here we assign a make of Honda to our macro variable makeval. This tells SAS to replace makeval in our proc print with Honda before running the code. And when we run this code, we see that a table is generated that only includes Hondas. And you can see that in the title, Honda is reflected. And we can do something similar by enclosing proc print at a macro module that includes a parameter for make. First, we no longer need our let statement and our put statement, so let's get rid of that. To create our macro module above our proc print, we need to add a line creating our macro and adding a parameter. To start, our syntax needs a percent sign followed by the word macro. Next, we need to name our macro. Let's call it print makes. Because we're going to be adding parameters, we need open and close parens. The parameter we're going to include is the name of a macro variable that will store the make of the car we want to print in our table. We already have a name for our macro variable in our previous code. So let's just use makeval. Let's copy this and paste it in here. It doesn't have to be makeval. We can call it whatever we want. But the important thing to note is that whatever we name it in the macro statement, we have to name it the same thing in the code. We end the macro using the men statement, starting with a percent sign, then the word mend. Then the name of our macro, print makes. We could leave out the name of our macro in this example and just type percent mend. But as you progress, you might want to include a macro within a macro. So it's good practice to include the macro name in the men statement as well. So let's make this a little bit prettier by indenting this proc print block. Now we could run this code as it is. And if we look at the log, it simply outputs the code to the log screen. And you can see it didn't run proc print. In order to run this code, we need to call this macro. The syntax for doing this starts with a percent sign, followed by the name of the macro we're calling. Let's copy this and paste it down here. And inside parens, we tell SAS the name of the make we want to use in our proc print. Let's use Toyota. And let's end this with a semicolon, as always. No, we already ran this macro code. So it has already been compiled and is ready to use without running it again. And we can call this macro from any line of code in this SAS session. It doesn't even have to be used in the same SAS program. We could open another SAS program and run it from there. And when we run this code, we see our table in the results tab. And it includes only Toyotas and the title list Toyota, just like we expected. So what if we wanted to run one for Ford? So we can keep our Toyota line. Let's copy that and paste one below it. This one, let's type in the word Ford. Now, when we run this, we see our table again, but this time with make of Ford and with the title of Ford. And in our code, anytime we want to run Ford, we just highlight this line and run it. Anytime we want to run Toyota, we highlight this line and run it. 
And if we wanted to look at Chevrolet, we could either replace Toyota with Chevrolet and run that, or we could create a new line down here that says Chevrolet. In example two, we're going to modify our macro code to include more than one parameter. So let's add another parameter named type val. Type val will hold the value for the type of car we want in our table. For example, what if we only wanted to see sedans? So let's modify our where statement to tell SAS to limit based on type in addition to make. And type equals, remember we have to put our macro variable inside double quotes and it has to start with an ampersand. So let's take type valve from up here and paste it down here. So now our where statement reads where make equals whatever we decide it is, for example, Toyota, and type equals whatever we decide the type is, for example, sedan. Let's also update our title as well. Let's take this macro variable and paste it down here. And lastly, we need to update our macro call to include type as well. Now we wanted sedans, so let's add the word sedan. Now we need to run our macro code again because we changed it. And we need to run our Toyota sedan macro call. So let's highlight these and run them. We see that now we have only Toyota sedans. Noting that our title has also been updated to Toyota sedan models and information. One of the most common ways I use repeated macros like this is to import data files, such as a comma delimited file. I import files that include hundreds of columns that can make the import code really long and that clutters up the rest of my code. For example, if I wanted to import a file and then run some statistics on the data. I have some code, import COVID, that imports a COVID hospitalizations file. This file is updated daily. So if I wanted up-to-date information, I need to download a new file and import it daily. So let's turn this import code into a macro. First, let's copy this code and paste it into a new SAS program. Like we did in the previous example, let's add a macro line at the top. And let's name it something descriptive, like import COVID. So let's make one of the parameters the path of the file we downloaded. Let's just name it path. Let's also add a parameter that names the SAS dataset we want to create. For example, we might want to import multiple files. This allows us to name them whatever we want. Let's name our parameter output. Let's end this with a semicolon. Now we have to replace our path and our import code with our parameter name. So let's copy this, paste it in here, path. And remember, it has to begin with an ampersand and it has to be enclosed in double quotes. So let's get rid of the single quotes. We also have to update our SAS dataset name right here with our parameter macro variable output. And again, we need to include the ampersand in front of it. Lastly, we need to end our code with the men statement. So let's copy this name of our macro, go down to the bottom, percent men macro name. So let's make this a little bit prettier too. Let's highlight this and indent it. Now let's run this code so it's compiled and ready to call. Oops, I added a space between the percent and the macro. Let's get rid of that. Let's try this again. There we go. Our log shows no errors and it's ready to go. So this code is already really long. Let's not add something to the end of it. So let's call this macro from our example SAS program under example three. Let's again copy the name of our macro. So percent side name of our macro, open and close parens. Now remember the first parameter was the path. Let's make this easy and go into our original code and grab this path from here. And we'll paste it into our macro. Then we need to name our SAS dataset. Let's call it COVID-1. And end it with a semicolon. Go back to the beginning. So let's run this. And if we look in our log, we see 
that work.covid1 was created with 19,653 observations. And if we go to our output, we can see what our data look like. Now that we have our import COVID macro written from here, we can save this file. So let's do save as and copy import COVID. But let's, rather than overwrite, let's just write the word macro at the end. Now we know this code will import our COVID data set using a macro. And let's save this in our COVID folder. And we see it saved over here. So let's close out of this. We don't need it anymore. Let's close out of this one too. Go back to our code. So if we opened up a new SAS session and we wanted to run this macro, we wouldn't necessarily need to open it and run it first. We could use the include statement. The include statement is a line of code that can be used to run a SAS program from any other SAS program. The include statement starts with a percent sign, followed by the word include. Then we add the path of a SAS file that we want to run inside quotes. So again, our SAS file is here. And if we right click this and go down to properties, we can take the location path right from this location field. And then we can paste it here inside quotes and it ends with a semicolon as always. Note the forward slashes used in the path for SAS Studio. That's because all SAS Studio sessions are run from a Linux platform and Linux has different path naming conventions. If you're using base SAS, you can right click while holding the shift key on the SAS code file in the location where it's stored and select copy as path. This will give you the path enclosed in quotes exactly what you need. Note that you can use this include statement anytime. It isn't strictly for code that includes macros, but because our code contains the import COVID macro we wrote earlier, now we can call it in our code here. So let's just steal the code from example three. And paste it under our include statement here because it's the same macro call. Just to show we can, let's update our output data set from COVID one to COVID two. So let's run these. We see in the log that work.covid2 was created with 19,653 observations, just like COVID-1. And again, if we look at the output data, we see that our data were imported, just like they were before. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something about how you might use this information to make your code more efficient and concise. Be on the lookout for other SAS macro videos where I show you how to create and use a macro variable and how to use if-then logic and loops to process large volumes of data with very little code. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.